Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Living Fit After 50. We, we've we been away for a while. Yes, we, we have. We had to go on. Hi- 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 I can't talk already. Yeah, it's been a while. Uh, we went on hiatus for a few weeks. We had some stuff we had to do. Yep. And uh, you might notice we have an awesome new set. Yeah, we do. It's like we're official now. We're professional. We're, well, well, I don't know about yeah, professional. All right. So, um, welcome back to the show. We are excited to be back. We're going to be talking because it's a new year. It is. So, I was, was going to play, play the, the old Beatles song, Revolution Number One. You say you want a resolution? Get it? Oh, really? Yeah, I get, get it. it. Get it what I do with that. But, you know, we can't have that happening because then we would get copyright issues and all that stuff. So, let's, let's just pretend we did it and move on. How's that sound? Perfect. So uh, again, welcome back. We are really excited to be getting going again. Uh, as I said, it's been about six weeks. We, uh, if you have never watched the show before, we uh, talk all things health, fitness, life, and living fit after 50. Like how I segue that? Very nice, Dan. So my name is Dan, as she just said, and my cohort here is... Lori. Otherwise known as... Smalls. And I'm known as Talls. So um, we just, if you've never watched us before, we are personal, personal trainers, trainers, nutrition coaches, all things fitness. Um, I've got about four, and a half, four decades of it. I am old. And Lori has a decade herself in. So we got a little bit of experience in that time, right? Yep. So um, we also host a website called livingfitafter50.com. Um, you can go check that out, see our prior shows on there. Um, lots of good stuff also. Lots. So how's it going, Lori? It's going great, Dan. How's it going for you? It's great. We're what, day seven into the new year? Day seven. Uh-huh. So 90% of the people who made a resolution have already quit. No, that's that, not true. <laughs> actually, the, the numbers are somewhere around 30%. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. So... Um, you know, one of the things that for me is exciting every January is that um, it is a new year and you do tend to see a lot of people start focusing on their health and fitness, which yep. is fantastic. Um, you know, we talk about the resolution in the fitness industry. The term is the resolutioners. Those are the people that join their gyms or start working on their diets and all that stuff. Um, and I think it's great that people do that. I I just wish people would stick with it. And we both know that doesn't happen too much, right? Correct. I mean, I had a resolution, and well, mine was to hit the gym three times a week. And one weekend, I've done it. See? Round of applause for I you. I know, right? So, uh, and that, you know, kind of nice little dovetail you did there, segue into did you like it. That? So, um, let's talk about resolutions. So, about, uh, it's in the neighborhood of about half. The population makes some sort of resolution, and there's there's lots of different ones. There's um, I want to get better organized is a common one. Um, quit smoking for those that smoke. Not that I ever have. Um, I don't think you have either, right? I can neither confirm nor <laughs> deny that one because I would not be married to her. Well, I so. did when I was young, so it doesn't count. That was decades ago. Uh, there's a ton of different resolutions, but the Far and away, the number one resolution, I'm kind of combining two of them really, is either to lose weight or get in shape, which really to me is the same resolution. Is it? It is, I think, for the average person. There are some people, no, it's not. I mean, right. um, like you and I, but I think the average person, they kind of go together. Um, and, you know, I forget the exact numbers on that, but it's somewhere in the neighborhood of like 60, 70% of the resolutions in some way fit in with that. Um, Hmm. And, you know, I actually think that's great because when you consider that roughly 80% of the American population is overweight, about 40-ish percent is considered obese or morbidly obese. Right. Um, You know, it's good that people are focused on that. The issue becomes they don't stick with it, right? Right. And, you know, and I was you know, contemplating a lot this week. And it's like, I got to get there, got to get there. And it takes 21 days to establish that habit of getting 
going with, you know, your health, your wellness, or whatever goal that you set. You've, it takes 21 days to create that. So, you know, and then I'm thinking, all right, so if I hit the gym three times a week, that's seven weeks, 21 days of fitness. But it's really... What? Well... Three times a week, seven weeks would be 21 weeks, dear. Twenty. I know, but it would be 21 <laughs> days of me working out. So that's where I look at... Seven days a week is what you meant for three weeks. No, I meant three times. If I went three times a week, it would take... Forget it. <laughs> it's my way of thinking, but I'm just going... Away. I'm going 21 days straight. No, I'm not going to do <laughs> 21 say, Wait a days here. straight. But because the problem is, TK I have to go with what her. I'm talking about. You he's don't probably have over to go there laughing. Me. Yeah, he's laughing. TK's our director slash producer since slash all knowing guru of things technical. How's that? You like that right. title? That worked. He's he's nodding his head over there. Yeah, right. Um, so the truth is, you know, when when we talk about resolutions. Um, you know, I kind of joked earlier that most people have already quit, but the reality is roughly a week to 10 days in about 20, 30% of people have already stopped because um, it's hard. It is hard. And, and we're going to get into that and we're going to talk about how to make it easier. And that's really what we're going to be talking about today. Um, you know, in the past I've done research on this and roughly of all the people who make a resolution, one year out, so next January, only about 8% of them have actually succeeded at it, which isn't bad. I mean, it's 8%, but those numbers could be much better, and, and we're going to give you some tips and tricks to help you with that. Uh, but even more startling is if you actually look it two, three years or more out, that number drops to somewhere around 1% to 2%. Hmm. Um, and you think about it. How many times have you lost weight, and maybe kept it off for a year or so. And then the next year, you gain it all back, and usually more, right? Um, Yo-yo dieting, it's called. And that's not a good thing. So when when we talk about success and losing weight, it's losing it for life, not up and down and right. up and down. Right. And, and again, when you're looking at resolutions, they have to be practical, sustainable resolutions. You're not going to, you know, give something up that is going to be very hard for you to be successful at. Right. Be or what add something into your life that's going to be difficult for you to be successful at. Yes, I completely agree with you on that. Did so, I lose you there I, for you a second? You did lose me. For, I, had to, I had to kind of put oh. it together. I know. She, I could see. She goes all around sometimes, and I just sit there and go, huh? It's a carnival um, going in my brain. She's talked about that before, yeah. Um, yeah and that's what, one of the things, what, the objective for today is to really kind of give you some guidelines, some, some tips, some tricks that you can use. Um, we're not saying you got to incorporate all of them, but we've done this. Like I said, I've done this for four decades. Lori's over a decade. Um, we've helped thousands of people um, to get weight off. And I'm focusing on weight loss, but really when I say weight loss, I'm also talking about getting in shape, fitness. Right. But really these apply to any resolution, whether quitting smoking, getting and organized and all that. Um, you no, know, going to the gym isn't going to help you get organized, but being organized can help you get to the gym. You like oh, what I did there? Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that was good. grief, Charlie um, Brown. So, you know, when you're listening in on this, my advice to you would be, you know, kind of listen to everything and then pick what is going to work for you because that's one of the biggest issues is – that I see with people who, who can't stick to their resolutions is they try and do too much right off the bat. It's a drastic change. I'm going to change 180 degrees. If I ate like crap and never went to the gym, I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week for two hours, and I'm going to eat nothing but lettuce, carrots, and drink water. Kind of like what you made me do yesterday. <laughs> what? You know, you... Made me go to the gym, and now there's carrots in our refrigerator. <laughs> That's because I'm going to make a recipe later on with that. Um, but, yeah, when you overcomplicate it, that's the biggest issue. Right. And what we want to do is kind of help you to streamline it to, to really kind of dial in on the things that are going to help you to succeed. Um, because what works for me or what works for Lori may not work for you. 
Um, and that's one of the things that we talk about. We do a program called Help Healthy Eating and Lifestyle Weight Loss Program. We don't give a, a cookie cutter diet that you go follow because 99 out of 100 times, it's not going to work for the average person. It'll work for some, but it won't work for everyone. The program is more designed about helping us find ways that you can eat healthier, but do it that fits within your lifestyle. You know, we're all busy, all that stuff, and using the foods you like and not eliminating them completely. So, um, not to kind of go off on that a little bit, but this is what we're talking about today comes right out of that that program. So, um, the first thing that I would say, I feel like I'm doing all the talking. You are, and nothing's changed. That should be your New Year's resolution. What's that? To, like, stop talking so much and let somebody else get a word in. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm going to sit here for the next minute. Go. You are not. So our first step is here. What is your plan? You can't stand it, can you? You are turning red because you cannot stand that I have the mic. All right. So what is your first step? You want to make a plan. I'm not allowed to talk. No, the you're not. Minute. So, <laughs> and so, you know, what changes do you want to make and how are you going to make them? And that's one of the things that I myself looked at because how am I going to achieve the goals that I have, you know, set for myself? And, and again, making them realistic because I can't say that I'm going to go to the gym seven days a week because my time frame does not allow it. So going, three times a week to get started is great going to the gym that is, but the, you know, the other four days of the week, I can be doing other things like, you know, walking on my lunch break and, and doing different things where, you know, getting healthier and keeping that fitness mindset going, not just three days a week. Well, let's step back. From that it from wasn't just a even second. a minute. Was it, it was a minute. No, I timed it. God, I was watching I on the knew. timer. One minute. It was one folks. minute. 14 Here he is. Seconds. Back to Dan. Ow. Go ahead. No, I was going to ask you a question. Okay. So let's step back for a second. You talked about like you're going to the gym. What is your actual goal? What is your why? Why are you doing this? Why? Because I do not like where I am in my life right now. Married to me? Kind of, but that, that's <laughs> beside the point. But my health and wellness has kind of like plummeted because I used my knee injury as an excuse not to do anything. Okay. So, and, um, so now it's, you know, it's a new year. I'm turning 60 in a month. So for me, I know what I want to do and where I want to be, um, when I jump out of the plane in June. Let's do a, if you don't mind, let's do a little exercise right now. Cause no. you, this wasn't planned, but this is kind of working. I'm out really not well. going to work out. No, I don't mean working out. Oh, okay. So you're saying your, your goal is to, I guess, look and feel better. Is that? A yeah. fair way to put it. Why? Because I do not like the way I look right now. Has okay. nothing to do with anybody else but me. Okay. Why? Oh my God. Why not? Well, why do you worry about how you look? Because it's not how I look, it's how I feel. I mean, I'm in bed by eight o'clock at night and I just think, shut up. She falls asleep on the sofa by eight o'clock. No, I'll but okay. So, so uh, but I know. Why do you want to look? feel better, all that. What so I live longer. So I live to be 110 to aggravate you for all those years coming forward. Why? Because it's fun. Ah, okay. Why? Stop it. <laughs> so what I'm doing, she's it, getting mad at me because she knows what I'm doing because she does it to people too. What we're practicing is it's known as the five whys, right? When you say I want to lose weight, get in shape, the things that Lori said, that's a not really a goal. That's an outcome. Ooh. Right. Ah. Your goal is what is it you need to do to get that outcome? I and already said my goal was to hit the gym three times a week. Oh, we're going to get into that, but I'm having a little fun. She does not know what I'm doing because this is kind of off. Well, I know tough. what you're doing. You're aggravating <laughs> me right about now. And this is what happens. So this is something that we do with people is we keep, Digging into the why, because the reason we say that, especially when it, with resolutions, is if you don't know your real why, and I want to look better or feel better, is not your why. That's your outcome. What happens is when things get tough, and they will, they always do. That's what causes you to give up, right? 
Whereas, and I'll use a perfect example, uh, and I talked about this not too long ago um, on our social media, on TikTok, I did a thing on it. Um, I was working with a woman, and I did the whys. And much like Lori, her first thing was, well, I want to look and feel better. And I said, why? And she meant, I'm getting older, things are tough, blah, blah, blah. Why? And I kept digging. Her ultimate why, and it was six or seven whys in, was that she was afraid because she was getting older and because she was out of shape that her husband was going to leave her. And now think about now, that. Now, I know you didn't ask me that question. No, I wasn't no, going there. No, you didn't go it. there, did you? Because I wouldn't probably like the answer. But, <laughs> <laughs> but when you think about it, right, and I said this to her, I said, now think about what you just said to me. Compare that to what you initially said to me. And if you had them on the wall, I want to look better versus I'm worried my husband's going to leave me, which is going to keep you more on track and motivated. And she said, the latter, I don't, you know, the fear of my husband leaving me. So your, your why may be totally different. Um, but when you find that why, the really deep down one, that becomes your mantra, for lack of a better term. And when you focus on that every day, and I've told people, just pick a word from that. Um, in this particular woman's case, the word husband. I said, write it down on a card or a piece of paper and stick it somewhere. Um, and that just becomes your daily reminder. You don't need to write a paragraph or a journal or any of that. Just that one word usually does it. That's one trick. Then, <coughs> to kind of circle back to what Lori was talking about, once you've established that why, that's when you got to come up with your plan. So let's assume we've established your why. Because I don't want my husband I'll to stop leave it. me. You know, you know I would never do that. Damn it. Um, you're stuck with me. Damn it. Um, so you talked about you're going to go to the gym three times a week. Well, to start. Okay. So I would say that's awesome. Well, thank you, Dan. What are you going to do at the gym? Check out all the hot guys walking by. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other show we got to do. We got to do that sometime. I am going to start out slow and do what I can do for myself. I'm going to do What do you mean what am I going to do at the gym? What are you going to do? You're just going to show up, sit there and scroll your phone? Cuz that's what 90% of the people at the no, gyms are doing so, right now. No, you know, I I've got my routine. I've got my workouts. I've, you know, I took a class today. Mm -hmm. So it's structured. I you know, I'm going for it starting with a half hour and adding time to it. What are you laughing at? Because you're going to kill me what I'm going to do next. I am going to kill you, aren't I? <laughs> He's going to die. So, but this is, so I'm purposely being this way. I'm, and not to be mean to Lori in any way, but really this is, this is why people struggle, right? Because they don't have a plan. What Lori just said is not a plan. What are you talking about? What I would say is you're going to have structure to it, all right? Oh. So I'm going to go to the gym three times a week. That's awesome. What are you going to do when you're there? Well, did you really want me to go into great detail yes. on what I'm going to do? All right, I'm going to swap my key fob in, and then Not I'm like going to do I'm going to do cardio. What one, kind of cardio? Some cardio. I'm going to do the probably the bike, the elliptical. Not the treadmill because I can walk anywhere. And then I'm going to do some arm workouts. I'm going to do my biceps, triceps. I'm going to do some leg workout, but I'm not going to do the same thing every day. Okay. I'm going to take a class so I've got a little more structure to somebody, you know, giving me some more direction, even though I know some of the stuff. But, you know, like I took a class today, it was like a Zumba class on steroids, but I did it. What, what are you smirking at? Because let me explain my plan. Oh, here we go again. Do we sit back, grab a cup of coffee? Well, you, you didn't ask me what my plan was. I didn't get a chance to. Dan, what's your plan? <laughs> so my plan is much more structured. Of course it so is. So I, my workout plan is three times a week also. Really? But I have my workouts planned for the next 12 weeks. Exactly what I'm going to be doing when I walk in the gym. And I have a plan B because if you've ever walked into a big box gym this time of year, they're packed. And like Lori mentioned, she was going to do cardio on whatever machine. There's going to be times you could walk in there and those machines are full. And that's awesome for the people that are on them, but that means you can't get on one. So what's your plan B? 
And that's really where I wanted to go with that. And I'm not trying to pick on Lori. I'm just using it because she's conveniently here. But Well, I mean, the bottom line is I, w- I would love to take a structured class every day that I go there. But, again, the gym may not have that. So knowing, you know, what I know, I don't have a 12-week plan calendar. Perhaps I should. But, Especially because um, you're a trainer. Well, <laughs> Or married to an awesome one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, <laughs> but I, I think that, you know, when when we get back to the why we're doing today's is the resolution um, and to stick with it. Yeah. Have a plan. Um, you know, you can start out with a six week plan and then add yeah, it to it. It doesn't have to be 12 because weeks. Because, it, again, when you think it. of looking out 12 weeks out, it's like, holy crap, 12 weeks. I'm just getting started. So, again, you want to start out small. Um, and then add to it. And if you had a six week plan and it would be okay to rinse and repeat that, especially if you are seeing success with it. Um, because most people are not personal trainers going into gyms and working out Ah. for the first time. Quiet. I'm still talking. So, um, Again, you know, there's enough information out there where you can develop your own workout plan and there's enough apps that you can use um, in the gym to kind of keep track. But getting started so you're not so overwhelmed, a six-week plan is probably more... It depends on the person. Right. But I'm saying if I am just getting started out, if I had to develop a 12-week plan before I walked into someplace that would be overwhelming for me but six week out i could do that um easily or knowing that if i'm going three days a week i've got my arms my legs my cardio and figuring that out um so yeah see, the thing is where we differ in our opinions and see this is the beauty of it is is you're getting two different opinions here neither one of us right. is right and neither one of us is wrong it depends on the person right um i actually don't agree with Lori on that and that's okay. Um, I think you do need to have a little bit more structure, especially if you're starting out. Now, I'm not saying it's got to be 12 weeks. Right. I, I mean, I'm not arguing that. You should you should have an idea and what workouts you're going to do. And you should have two ready in case you can't get to a particular one. Um, you know, in my case, I my goal is to get back to strength training. I had to, for those of you that have watched the show before, you know that I ran into some medical issues Uh, about three, four months ago. I couldn't really exercise until now. I haven't been able to do much of anything. I finally am cleared. Uh, So I'm, I'm actually back to basics, very beginning. I, I cannot do what I was doing back in the summer and early fall because my body's just not there right now. So I stripped it down. I lift weights um, twice a week and I have my workouts programmed for them. So I know when I walk in the gym, I'm going to do workout a or workout B. And if I can't do workout a, for whatever reason, I just do workout B that day. And the next time I do workout a, and then I have a third workout, let's call it workout C, which is flexible. Um, and instead of saying a and B workouts are very rigid, but C is like, well, you could do this or this this or this, but at least I have something to go by. Right. So then if I can't do A or B, I've got C. And my goal is each week to go three times, much like Lori, usually not with her. Um, Thank God. Thank God is right. Uh, But that way I have a plan because that way I'm not walking in the gym and going, oh, because this is what I see. I don't know what to do. So, Dan, I'm going to stop you there. Um, we're going to take a break in a second, but, and I'm going to let you think about this. All right. Okay. If somebody is new walking into a gym, not worked out for a while Mm -hmm. to be successful for their new year's resolution, what would you recommend they do to get ready for their workout? So on that, I'm going to let you think and ponder your thoughts. And we are going to take a short break. Okay. All right. We'll send us to break then. We're going to send us to break.
Okay, we are back to Living Fit After 50, and uh, I gave Dan a few minutes to think about the question that I asked him. I wish I could say I'd remembered it, but no, <laughs> I do, I do. So the question was, because you had commented about the number of people that walk in there and look like um, deer in the headlights when they walk in there. Um, so what advice would you give someone who is just walking into these fitness studios or gyms mm -hmm. um, on how to truly get started so that they are successful for their resolution? Now, mind you, they're not personal trainers. They have right. no idea. They don't even know how to find the apps on their phone for tracking. Um, so here it is. I am new walking in and you see me come in, what are you going to do? Turn around and run. I know that. Because <laughs> you're um, scary. No, um, seriously. So seriously, I'm going to answer this for a person that really has never walked into a gym or maybe hasn't since they were in college. Because that's not that uncommon with some Right, because resolution. people do not feel right. comfortable. So as I mentioned, you want to have a plan. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about how I would develop that plan as someone who is not a trainer or something like that. One thing that I would bring out that you can do, and people do it all the time, is they go get fitness magazines. There's men's fitness, women's fitness. There's tons of them, right? Health and fitness, all of them. And they'll have workouts in them. You can also go on YouTube and find workouts to do. Mm -hmm. There's ones on Facebook. There's ones on TikTok. They're all over the place. The problem is, is are those workouts appropriate for you? And they may or may not be. I will tell you, I um, have seen some amazing workouts on various social medias and magazines, ones that I've done, right? I've also seen some very bad ones. Um, and the, the problem for the average person is they don't know what's good or bad. So a little bit of it is going to be trial and error. The first thing I would do is what is it you like to do, first of all? Because if you don't enjoy something, you're not going to do it, right? Well, let's be realistic. Who really likes going to work out? Unless, I, aside from you, you weirdo. Um, but I'm saying when you look at the average person, if mm -hmm. it does become an addiction. And once you get going with it and start right. seeing the results and everything... But the bottom line is it becomes a task after the first or second week. So Does it? Well, for normal people, you're not normal. So, that, so what it's again, we're kind of sidetracking here. Um, the thing that I would point out with that to kind of address that, since you brought it up, is it's going to be what you think it's going to be. So if you think it's a chore or I forget what the word you use. Task. A task or something like that. If you think that ahead of time, you've already defeated yourself because you've turned it into a negative. Instead of saying, I get to go to the gym today and I'm going to spend an hour on me and I'm going to crank up my headphones and I'm going to do whatever it is you're going to do and I'm just going to enjoy it for whatever it is. Correct. But that mindset is probably what the biggest difference is between those who succeed and those who don't. Right. So... Again, coming back into it and not having worked out mm -hmm. forever. Um, and I, I'll tell you, the struggle was real for me my first week. Like, ugh. like you even said, go to the gym for 20 minutes. I'm like, ugh. Well, I was going to, yeah, that was a You know, I was and yeah. I, I was like, all right, fine. I'll go to the gym for 20 minutes. And I was praying that something came up at work so I wouldn't <laughs> have to go to the gym for 20 minutes. But, um, you know, and I went to the gym the other night. Um, for about a half hour and everything. And, and I felt good. Um, and that's where you kind of have to push yourself to do it. You can't mm -hmm. keep looking for the excuses or um, the, the ways to get out of going. And again, if you don't really know what you're doing, I mean, looking around and watching people work out and stuff kind of gives you, um, you know, an idea of like, Oh, uh, look at that. I can do that. I can do that. Um, but I think when people are have not worked out, you know, getting that first step going, um, and you like you you said, you know, YouTube has a lot of stuff. You want to look at stuff that are for 
beginners just getting That's started key point, point. out there. And again, if you're thinking about, you know, working out, do that research. Like Dan had said, um, do your research, go to YouTube and look up, um, you know, arm workouts for beginners or, you know, leg workouts for beginners. Because the one thing you don't want to do is go into a gym, hop on a machine, get injured, because then you're going to be like, yep, see, well, that's I what, knew yeah, this was going to happen. Happens, correct. Um, <clears throat> and they do have the trainers that are, are there and you can, you know, inquire about some lessons and stuff that way. But, um, you know, I, I just think that people have to do their research before going in. I, and I completely agree with you. So you do? On that, yes. Oh. So first thing I would do, as Lori said, is you want to do some research. Um, and how would I approach that as someone who's never worked out? First thing I would do is kind of take a few minutes and say, what is it? You know, we all kind of know what working out is, right, in some way. What is it I enjoy doing? You may say, I'm going to, I like to go for walks. I want to go to the park. Um, we're near a beach. I go to the beach, whatever. That could be your, your exercise. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to go to a gym. You may decide that, you know, back in college, I loved lifting weights. And even though I'm now myself almost 60, that's what I think I'll do, right? Whatever it is you decide that you enjoy and you like, you know, Lori brings up the point, it can be a chore. Yeah. The thing that you enjoy doing the most, that's the one you're more likely to stick to. Right. So that's the first step. Then from there, and I'm just going to say lifting weights just to pick something. It doesn't mean it's better, although it is, uh, <laughs> at least in my opinion. From there, I would put a plan together. Okay, I'm going to lift weights. Lori mentioned a little bit about her weightlifting, which is an upper body arms and a lower body. That's fine, right? So then go look for workout routines. I'm going to have an upper body workout every week, a lower body and here's the exercise. The caution I would make, though, a couple of things, um, especially with the magazine ones. And I'm not knocking those workouts. They're phenomenal. But majority of them are not designed for beginners. They're no. designed for intermediate, advanced level. And if you try and do that, one, you're probably not going to do it right, meaning your form's not going to be great, and you're going to get hurt, which Lori just mentioned, and two, the other thing that'll happen is you'll end up so sore you will not be able to move two days later. Right, and, and that's, that's going to defeat right. purpose. Right, and that and that is one of the yeah. things like, um, like I said to you yesterday, I, you know, I want to be able to walk tomorrow. Right. Um, but one thing that and you you talk about the magazine articles and stuff, but I do see that a lot of them now are doing beginner, intermediate, advanced. You they know, are writing it up, that. which is yes. great. Um, not so much, you know, they may be decreasing the weight on stuff or the reps. Um, and another thing um, that I saw even today, which I thought was great, is um, people keep track of their workouts in a composition notebook. Um, yep. I like the composition notebooks because you can't really tear those pages out easy. And um, I still have some of mine from the 80s somewhere. The phone apps are great. The phone apps However, are I, I remember having, you know, I did an interview with somebody regarding all the phone apps and the, uh, the apps on the watches and stuff. But they become distracting only because. Ooh, I got a text message. I wonder who this is. And, you know, oh, I can <laughs> yeah, check my be, email, yeah. you know. So utilizing a paper, um, a, a composition notebook to kind of keep track of your workouts. Yeah, I know you have to use it's your phone. but it for, works. Well, yeah, but you, <laughs> a lot of people use their phones for music and stuff. But I also noticed that a lot of people bring their little backpacks or little bags with them you can keep your phone in the bag it's still going to get the music especially if you're using earbuds and it, if you're truly going to dedicate an hour to yourself you got to kind of keep the phone away i think i think that's a great suggestion Thank for you. a lot of people um even for me you know and you kind of did this when we went and worked out this morning. You put your phone in my gym bag. I my, did. I'm one of the, quote, muscle heads. I have my gym bag. I carry it around. She laughs at me. Yeah. All my stuff's in there. Um, but Lori literally took her phone out of her pocket and stuffed it in the gym bag. She could still hear her music, but she wasn't distracted by her phone. 
I'm the opposite. I use my phone to track my workouts. Back in the day, before smartphones, I like much like Lori talked about, I had notebooks. I still have some of those notebooks from the 80s and 90s. That's how far back some of them go. And it's fun to kind of look back at what I did back then and say, hey, let me try that workout again. Um, you, you kind of build um, a, a repository of workouts that you have. And then you can go, oh, I like that one or I like that one. So if you do step away for a while or you right. have, you can go back and look at it and you'll kind of circle back to what I talked about earlier, jog your memory of the things that you like to do. Lori made some really good points with all that. Ooh, Distraction. I what? I did? Eh, for once. Eh. Um, you know, distractions, that, that happens. As, I, as we talked about earlier, whatever plan you come up with, whatever workout routines you want to do, the one thing I would make sure you want to do is start slow and gradually build. So a common thing people will say when they're making a resolution is, I'm going to go to the gym for three days a week for two hours. That is way too much, all right? I want to go to the gym, and I'm going to do 15 to 20 minutes week one. 20 to 30 week two, 30 to 40 week three, 40 to 60 week four. That is much more realistic, I think. What do you think? You're right. I'm always right. I mean, I, <laughs> I, and he, coming from somebody who took an hour class today, but I went at my pace. So that's the thing, too, is when you right. when you go to these um, these establishments and you want to try a class, Go at your level. I mean, you know, they're like spinning and doing all this stuff. And I just kept doing side steps because I didn't knew, know the routine yet. But Well, you also are dealing with recovery right. from a so, re knee replacement. Yeah. But, um, you know, take a class. Let the instructor know that you're new. You're just starting out. There's a key point. And I tell you, you know, um, my instructor was great. I talked with him for about five, ten minutes before I stood in the back of the class and midpoint, and he goes, "Hey, Lori, how you doing?" I'm like, "Oh crap," you know. You but got I singled was, out. I got singled out, but, but yes. in a good way. Yeah. So he was checking, and, and at least you know you let the instructor know that you're just getting started, and they do keep an eye on you. And again, you're going to go at your level. Um, like Dan said, start out slow. You're not going to compete with somebody that's been doing it for you know, six, eight weeks, and they or, already know everything. Or six, eight years or right. decades yeah. like us. So, yeah. you know, go at your pace. Um, go slow. And, you know, don't try to keep up with somebody next to you because, A, they've been going, you know, five hours a, a day for seven and there, weeks. There are people and, that do that. You know, you brought up a point that I want to kind of just hammer home, which is if you're going to do any kind of a group fitness class, whether it's dance, Zumba, Body pumps a common one. Um, the Les Mills programs, any of those. Yoga. If it's your first time, go to the instructor. Go up before class and just say, hey, this is my first time doing it. Um, here are some issues I have. Let them know. Hey, I, in my case, I'll use myself as an example. Years ago, my first time, I finally got talked into trying yoga. So the first yoga class I did, I went up to the instructor and I let her know. I said, hey, this is my first time doing yoga. I don't think I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm here to try it uh, just to let you know. And I let her know some, some issues that I had. The, the key point that happened with all that is, one, I got a little bit of extra attention in the class and not in a bad way, much like you described with you. They're just checking on you. Mm -hmm. They can help you. Um, what you're doing is you're giving the instructor of that class the ability to help you better, right? You're not getting singled out. They're watching you. They'll pay more attention to you because I've taught those classes, all right? Um, back in the day and when I worked at the YMCA this time of year, there might be 50 people in a class. And I'm up on a stage doing the workout, and I'm trying to watch 50 people. I will tell you point blank, that's impossible. Nobody can do that. But if somebody's new and they've talked to me or they have limitations, I can at least kind of focus on them a little bit. That's not to say I'm ignoring everyone else, but my goal as the instructor was, look, I've only got so much I can do. Let me pay attention to the people that are starting out. Don't be afraid to speak out and do that. Right. I know people get embarrassed about it. They're worried they're going to get singled out. I know how that feels. I, I get it. But you're far better off doing that. 
A um, couple other things I would mention, and you kind of touched on this, start slow, right? Mm-hmm. DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness, is a very, very real thing. And I speak from personal experience two weeks ago because, as I said, I was not able to work out um, for the better part of almost four months. So I've worked out my whole life. So people would think, oh, he could just jump right back in and get back to what he was doing. Well, even though I'm lifting significantly less, to give you an example, my squats were between 350 or 400. I started with 95 pounds. That was it. I got so sore <laughs> just from doing, and I didn't overdo it because no, my body wasn't used to it. And she made fun of me for it. Well, because I know you overdid it. Not really. I mean, yeah. I did, but I didn't. You he know? did. Um, and, and what happens, though, is it's going to happen to a lot of you. If it does happen, it happens, right? So you just got to power through it. There's, it. It'll go away. There's really nothing you can do. You can do some stretching. Movement can help. You know, some people say take ibuprofen and all that. I will tell you right now, majority of the time, it well, doesn't do a thing for DOMS. Uh, the best thing you can do, though, is not just sit around. Get up and move. It will go away and take the lesson to be learned, which is slow down, build up over time with your progress. A um, couple other things that I would mention, uh, probably the biggest mistake that I see people make, especially starting out, they don't warm up and they don't cool down. And I saw this all week long. People, and I could tell this was like the first time they'd been in a gym in forever or forever. They would come in, they would jump on, let's say, the elliptical and just go as hard as they could. And that's just a recipe for you're asking for an injury or to, you know, experience DOMS, right? You need to do an, a proper warm up and a proper cool down. It does not mean you need to do 20 minutes. Uh, what would you say for a warm up? How, how long? Five minutes. Five minutes. I would say three to five minutes myself. That would be my answer. Simple little things, just marching in place. If I was going to go on an elliptical, I would just simply march in place for a couple of minutes. Maybe do some step outs or jumping jacks, light ones, slow, uh, stuff like that, high knee march, whatever, just to get the blood flowing. That's really all a warm-up is about, is just to get the blood flowing, get the muscles warmed up, hence the name, um, and then do your, your workout. Conversely, cooling down. The other thing people do is that elliptical says, I did my 30 minutes, I'm in the car. Yeah, but thank God the machines have a cool-down setting. But most people don't use them. I at know, least in my experience. Uh, and I've, like I said, I've been working in big box gyms for 40 years. The, the number of people, the minute that timer, whatever they've set it for, hits zero, they're done. They don't do the cool down. So, you know, they've been trucking along um, at 1010 on the elliptical and they get off and go. No, drop it down. Most of the machines will do somewhere between a three and five minute cool down yep. um, and lighten it up. And, that allows your body to restart the recovery process. Again, it helps prevent muscle soreness. More importantly, it helps prevent injuries. Uh, stretching is not a bad thing. We could do a whole routine on that. A um, couple other things to just quickly mention is form. So if you're not sure how to use a machine, whether it's an elliptical, a weight machine, anything, go up to the front desk and ask them how to use it. Ask them to show you. That's what they're there for. I will tell you, having been that person, I lived for those moments. I loved it. Because the worst thing you can do when you're sitting at the front desk of a gym is sit there. It's boring as hell. You just watch people scan their little key fob going by. When they come up and ask you a question like, hey, I want to learn how to use, pick your piece of equipment, I got up and I could go show them, talk to them. Here's how to do it. Here's the proper way. Watch them do it. Make sure they're doing it right. It's a win-win. I, I feel good about it, and they're not going to get as injured or sore. Um, so form is a big thing. If you're looking at doing things like weights or anything like that, hire a trainer. Yes. People will say to me all the time, and I, I can't tell you the number of times I've heard, I went on YouTube and watched how to do a squat. Okay, show me. 90, and I'm not joking, 90% of the people that I have worked with when I ask them to show me how they do a squat, do it wrong. 
And that's not an exaggeration, 90 to 95%. And they'll tell me, I saw how to do it. I know how to do it. Um, a trainer can do, not just show you how to do it, but watch you do it and make corrections. Right. And, and I'm not knocking Lori, but yesterday we were working out together and she just didn't have a foot placed right. Something as minor as that. She knows what she's doing. She just had a, a brain fart, and I do it I too. I just wanted to see if you were watching and, and making I was, sure wasn't I? I was doing it correctly. And it was, and it, you might think that's a minor thing, the placement of the foot, but it's what could have led to injury. A um, couple other things, just to quickly, I have some notes here. I think I've covered everything except for plan your rest days. Make sure you get at least one or two full rest days, especially if you're over 50. You do not need to be working out seven days a week. And the final thing I'll throw out there is old school works. Think about that. If you're, if you're just starting to work out, the shiny new object that comes up. Um, and, I, and just to give you an example, the, if you remember back a few years, Zumba was all the rage. It is all but dead and buried now. All mm -hmm. right? CrossFit bubbled up. It's not gone, but it's not what it was. I could list... Dozens of them. The only one that's kind of maintained is yoga. Yoga kind of bumbled up in the 80s and 90s and is still going strong. That shiny new object, I'm not knocking them. They're great. I think Zumba for a beginner is one of the best things you can do. Mm -hmm. But don't chase the shiny new object. Come up with a basic routine that you know you can follow and that you'll stick with. And that's your best way. Any final thoughts on exercise? And then we can take no, a break. No, I think it's perfect. Oh, stop it. Huh. You have thoughts. No, I don't. I, I mean, you touched on everything. Um, you know. What I miss? Anything? No. You, t you, you got everything. Start slow. Take a rest day. Yeah. She's thinking out loud, I can tell. No. All right, why don't you throw us to break? I'm going to throw us to break. <laughs> How is that? Jesus. You need to work on that one. I know. All right, it's time for a break. Um, just, uh, <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, welcome back. This was a great start to our fitness um, segment, getting back into the routine and the new year and the resolution. Um, I think they we made resolution. There he goes singing. There we go. Now um, got a but I think break. we we did uh, we touched on a lot today for a lot of people to kind of uh, take on and take in. Um, so I I know that we have some great things for our next show. Yeah. Talk so we'll call this one part one. Is that fair? Sure. So we kind of talked about you know having a plan, just to kind of review quickly and exercise. What we're going to do is come back with part two. Part two is going to be talking about the other big one, which is diet, nutrition, eating in general. Um, and I think we'll also have some other tips that we want to talk about that we, we kind of haven't touched on yet, but are equally as important to diet, nutrition, and exercise. Correct. So uh, let's call it at that. We shall. It was a fantastic show. That's because I'm here. <laughs> Don't forget, livingfitafter50.com. There's tons of stuff on there, um, and you can see past shows on there. And don't forget, like, subscribe, follow, all that stuff that everybody talks about on these various social media channels. It does help us to get our reach out there. You know, we are a fairly small channel. We're trying to grow. We want to help as many people as we can. So if you enjoyed this, and if you've watched this far in, you must have enjoyed it. Take a moment and hit that like button, do the little heart. Um, and uh, hit that follow because we got a lot more to do. All right. Till next time. I am Talls. And I'm Smalls. And we'll see you next week on Have Living a great Fit day. After 50. <laughs>